Praise the Lord. We welcome you to the Father's house. We're going to begin tonight by singing Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. The child that forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed.
Let your minds be emptied out of your earthly things that you can hear my voice that you can see that you can know that you can understand for the hour is extremely short and many things shall take place let not your heart be filled with fear for you're of my kingdom, and I shall take you through this kingdom victoriously. That you can walk in the fullness of all that I have for you. That you can be all that I've said that you could be. But become serious. Become serious for the hour calls for very serious thinking, very serious decision making. It is that hour and it is that time. But the victory shall be great. It shall be something you'll never forget. Neither shall those that are left behind. But the victory that I shall give shall be universal. It shall be everlasting. And it shall be beyond anything that you can imagine. So just draw close. Be comforted. Listen to my voice. Know my voice. Let me fill you with peace. Let me fill you with joy. Let your heart be at rest. Let there be no struggle. For really, you've already won. Ea va 
Hashielande, Kiala, Hayama Hosso Yolo, Toriama Hosi, Bishi, Ilanda, Ayama Hosso Yolo, the Oyama Hasa, Kiava Hasaya, Ealande, Yalo, Toriama Hosi, Alondo Riava Hosilan, Divi Alande, Oyolo Riava Hosi, Iva Hasha Yolo, Oyama Hasai. Yamahala Lady Eva Yala Korea Bohoshi Yalandaria Bohoshi Yala Te Um Tidia Bahasa Yala Lady Evishi Kialando O Yala Eala Taria Bahosa Yolo Doria Bahishi Liandia Kiala Te Anondoria Bohosha Yoloto Eva Hasi Ialande Ha A Tialande Ea Kialande Alo Horiaba Sialande Yala Taria Bahoshi Yolo Korea Ma Taria Bahoshi Yola Kiva Sialande, Eala Tariava has a yellow Tariava Hoshilandriava, Kiriandria, Ria, Bohosuladria, Triava has she, E. A. Na, A. Taria, Isiliande, Yala Kayamo, O Nodariava Hoshiolo Toriamo also, Tiava has she, Yala Tiamo also, Tiava Hosho, Ia Siana Driava, E. Yala Tayamo, Iava has she, Kayala di Ia. Dei alo toria moho so yolo toria moho siya Nai haya la poya maria ba Dei ala di ala Dei ala toria moho si Kiamba ea diriante that my word declares unto you my word that you know did they not try to wipe you off the face of the earth before did I not intercede on your behalf do you see what Iran is doing or have you seen what has taken place in Egypt? In the loss that took place there? <coughs> Do you look to me? Do you honor me? Do you lift me up? Can you not hear the battle cry? Can you not see and sense that even those that did declare your friendship turn their backs upon you and say it's all you? Did I not tell you that this would take place? 
Have you not read in my word where I have told you that these things would come to pass? Have you yet figured out that the end is here? That the days have been numbered? That soon you shall hear the missiles, and you shall hear the bombs, you shall hear the shells, and the gunfire. And then you'll know, then you'll wake up. Will you flee in time to go to the place that I have prepared for you? Will you do that? Would you receive my son Jesus Christ as your Messiah and go with my church? That you need not go through the things that you're going to go through? How long? How long? Will you tarry between two thoughts? Do you remember reading when your prophet spoke unto you and said, Choose this day whom you shall serve? Will you turn again? Will you come back to me? Your days are extremely short. Your days are far shorter than you realize. And without my intervention, you would not win. But I will keep my covenant, and I will protect you, and I will fight for you. And I will go before you. And I'll lead you into that place in the mountain that you can be safe. But when I say go, don't go back into the house. But leave, flee, run, pray. There will not be snow upon the ground. But flee, flee quickly to that place that I have for you. Understand the things that I have said unto my people, unto my children Israel? Are your ears also dull of hearing? Is your wisdom and knowledge lacking? Do you see and know and understand the things that are taking place? Do you even know? what the year 2012 holds.
For truly have I not given unto you all wisdom and all knowledge, and yet you still are unable to see the day and the hour you live in. I speak to you clear instructions, and yet you tarry a day longer. For truly, wake up, my children. Wake up, thou that sleepest. For there is a great troubling going on in the world. And soon war will break out. And soon the great shaking will come. Will it take that to wake you? Must you lose everything to wake up and see what is going on? And yet, I warn you over and over and over. Did not I warn you about moving away from the seashores 50 miles? And how many of my children still live in that area? An area I told them to remove themselves from. Oh, my people, that you would hear, that you would listen. For truly, I do not tell you these things to be fearful. I do not tell you these things to trouble you. But I tell you these things so that you might be victorious and that you might be the overcomers in these end days. For truly things are happening faster than ever before. Even things that you thought would take years to fulfill will happen in just days. Wake up, my people. Wake up and be victorious. Don't allow the devil to steal and rob for you because you did not listen to my calling. Because you did not heed unto my warnings. Get into my word. Know my word like never before. For truly, everything you need to know is in my word. Hear me, my children. Heed my voice. Do not take my warnings lightly. Do not throw them off or put them off in the days and years to come. For in just minutes, a city can be destroyed. In just seconds, lives can be lost. Hear me, my children. Hear me this night. this is an hour when you need to be open to the moving of my spirit. When you hear my voice and respond not in a spiritual or religious state but as a child as my child as an heir of my throne. For many deadly things are already boxed up and crated up and are heading this way. Many things that if I would tell you at this moment would cause your heart to almost faint. would make you weak. But I give you not these things as I said to bring fear to you. For I'm able to take you through this time victoriously. And you must keep your mind, you must keep your heart 
upon that promise that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. That I have sealed you. That I will pr protect you, care for you. That I shall feed you and make sure you have clothing to make sure you have water to make sure you have the things that you have need of but get into my word get into the book of revelation like never before Stand in the book of Revelation and be not moved. Read line upon line, verse upon verse. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Put off your thoughts, put off your thinking. For you know not the things that are taking place or about to happen around the world. For you have a leader that would lie to you as quick as not. Those that follow him closely would cut your throat in a moment. But I am your Father, and I shall watch over you. I shall protect you and keep you safe. I shall go before you. And as you look into Ezekiel, and as you look into Jeremiah, and as you look into Obadiah, The Holy Spirit shall open your understanding. And you'll understand why Russia is doing what she's doing right now. <coughs> you'll understand why North Korea is doing what she's doing right now. And if you don't understand what the Muslim nations are doing, then you're ignorant. You're ignorant. Are you aware of what took place in Egypt? Are you aware of what has taken place in Italy? And what has taken place in England and Britain? And what has taken place in Ireland and Scotland? In many other places, are you aware of what has taken place there? And how one dominant leader, because of their finances, are combining them all tightly under one, with the same desire, with the same passion that they had many years ago. it's time to know it's time to seek my face it's time to call upon my name it's time to press into the fullness of the things that I have for you it's time to put away playing church and become the church become the church not the false church where the false church is on your right and on your left, it's before you, it's behind you, it's all around you. They have forsaken my ways and they have gone their own ways. And many spiritual giants have fallen along the wayside because of greed, because of money, because of fame. Because of glory. 
And many boast that their ministry is the only ministry that shall do it. Only my ministry shall do it. Only my church shall do it. Only my anointed ones shall do it. Those that I have raised up for this hour, for this time, for this season. Those. Those. And they'll be more powerful than even David's elect. Even his greatest warriors. They will seem weak comparison to the army that I've raised up. It shall be a glorious hour. An hour without spot. An hour without wrinkle. An hour when my church will come to the very top like cream on milk that you can separate it from off the milk for it shall be the highest treasure that the world shall ever see that the world shall ever know and I shall equip you and I shall empower you and you shall go forth as mighty warriors prepared and dressed for battle. And your weapon shall be your mouth and the word of God. It shall be sharper than any two-edged sword. It shall tear down walls and stop missiles and stop bombs. Stop the gas. Stop the attack. And bring in the harvest. For I shall protect my harvest far more than anything else. And my church shall be over the harvest to bring in the harvest. To call in the harvest. And they shall come to my house, even as I have spoken unto you, even as I have told you. And they shall come and receive the anointing that they need. They shall come and receive the instructions that they need. They shall come and be prepared for the battle, that they can go back and bring in the harvest. That the harvest will not fall. That the harvest will not perish. That the harvest will not die. For the harvest shall come in. And the harvest shall be victorious. And the money shall flow into the faithful. It shall flow into the faithful. Who do not look upon it as if it is their own. Even though they shall eat of it. Even though they shall be supplied by it. It will be for the, for the harvest. It will be to sow into the harvest. It will be to help and to reach out. And not just give to those that you enjoy. Those that you like. Those that ask, but it'll be for those that I, your Father God, speaks unto you. And you shall sow much, and you shall reap much, and you shall save from the harvest the seed to sow for the next harvest. And you'll sow unto the harvest, not from the harvest. 
For if you try the many ways man has tried before, there will be no harvest for them. Even like the children of Israel when they got greedy and they brought the manna into their house and they stocked it up and stored it up and before morning the worms had ate it up. It's a very serious hour. Yet at the same time a glorious hour. A beautiful hour. A time that all my servants have wanted to see time they all wanted to be part of my elite army that would go for the harvest that would bring in the harvest that would fill the churches to overflowing that would heal the sick deliver those that need deliverance cast out demons Perform the miracles, even created life, limbs, eyes, arms. Oh, the joy, the joy, the joy. Make yourself ready. Make yourself ready. Get your eyes upon what I am doing this night. Make yourself ready. giving tonight. Father, we thank you and praise you for the money that's in our hands that we can release to you, Lord. We give and we thank you and praise you for it. Amen.
Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hand in the holy place and bless the Lord and bless the Tuesday night, church on Wednesday night, pastor's birthday on Thursday. If you want to do something special for him, why, that would be nice. Praise God. All right. Thank you, Lord. And uh, Sunday, two programs, and uh, what can I say? Praise God. Sunday morning we'll have the younger children and pastor will be preaching along with that and um, Sunday night the uh, program for the school and church as well all right praise God a reminder again uh, if you want to do something uh, for the Christmas bags that we pass out next week I guess this is the only week to do it we haven't even been saying much about that but if you want to do something see Gwen Praise God. All right. Boy, this thing is ringing like crazy tonight. Hmm? Oh, really? Oh. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Any, uh, go ahead, David. You're ready to sing tonight, right? Oh, are you uh, singing tonight or aren't you? All right. Anybody uh, have a quick testimony they want to give before uh, before David sings tonight? Praise the Lord. All right. I just want to urge everybody to just uh, keep your spirits open. feeling in my spirit. I know that uh, I don't think God was quite done. <clears throat> so, in any case, um, if God is speaking to you, definitely don't hesitate to speak that out. I mean, I don't even know if I, I don't know, the way I'm, I'm feeling my spirit right now, I don't know if I'm ready to sing yet. There's, there's something out there I can, I can I can sense it strongly in my spirit. Pastor, you want to wait on the Lord a few more minutes or I just don't feel I can continue right now with <clears throat> Praise the Lord, thank you Jesus. Kevin, maybe turn this mic down a little bit, about we're about to zero. This is the right mic. What's that? Yeah, I think so. It was ringing just a little bit. My voice is pretty strong, so.
There's a rose in Bethlehem with a beauty quite divine, perfect in this world of sin. On this silent holy night, there's a fragrance much like that it sends upon the wind reaching out to every soul from a lowly manger's crib oh rose of Bethlehem how lovely pure and sweet born to Glorify the Father born to wear the thorns for me. There's a rose in Bethlehem, colored red. the blossom of God's love, though its bloom is fresh with you, surely what will be he knows, for a tear of morning dew is rose. over. Glory. Second Corinthians. 
fourth chapter, verse 7, 8, 9, 10. Glory. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Glory. Hallelujah. One of the most powerful statements that we just read a little of is found again in the book of Daniel. Glory. The sixth chapter. Glory. Now I got two I got two scriptures here, but it could only be one. So, the fourth chapter, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, but the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. Remember this morning we talked about the fire of God, the need of the fire of God. I think we're getting some of that fire of God tonight, early. I believe we were getting. God was saying some things. I hope it didn't go in one ear and right on out the other. Glory. This verse sounds a note of victory in our spirits. It has what we call sister verses. 1 John 4.4 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is He that's in you than he that's in the world. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now this didn't say anything about our strength. Luke 10.19 Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. That's Satan. All of his power. Glory. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Glory. Now, if, if you live very long already, Glory, and most of you here tonight have lived over 20 years because the kids are all in the other room. Glory. You know, it didn't take long to realize that life is not fair. God's never said life would be fair. He said He would be fair. He would be just. Glory. And because of this, we've seen bad things happen to good people. To good people. Sometimes Christians have financial problems. Sometimes Christians get sick. Sometimes Christians fight personal battles. Sometimes they have problems in their marriage in their mind, in their flesh, their appetite. Glory. In our text, Paul says, I have been troubled on every side and perplexed, persecuted, knocked down. And he also says, not distressed, not in despair, not forsaken, not destroyed. 
Glory. There's a message in here, and it's not a negative one. It's as positive, as positive as we can get. But Christians only go to the halfway point, and they don't get the positive. They stay over on the negative. And they're looking for the bad things that are going to happen to them. The bad things. Glory. I've come to tell you tonight, it doesn't matter what the enemy is working against you. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with. It doesn't matter what the enemy says he's going to do. Because the Bible says in Isaiah, the 54th chapter, verse 17, no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. Amen. Now what does that mean? Can't work. Can't work. It didn't say we wouldn't have a battle. It didn't say we wouldn't have a fight. But it can't work. It can't work. The Bible did not say that Satan would not form weapons against you. Glory. Or that he would not launch an attack against you. No. Or that he would not try to touch you. But what the Bible does say, it shall not prosper. Amen. It shall not accomplish its intended purpose. Wow. Glory. As a matter of fact, the Bible teaches us that all things work together for good. Not to everybody, sad to say. Not to every Christian. To them who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Romans eight twenty eight. How much do you love Him? How much do you love him? It doesn't matter who you are or how spiritual you are. At some point in your life, you're going to be dealt a blow. Potholes. Don't you love potholes? I mean, we even see them this time of year, but wait a couple months. And then we're really going to see potholes. And how many's ever... Just been driving down the road, minding your own business, and suddenly, <laughs> you think you tore the hole underneath the car out. <clears throat> you hit a pothole. <coughs> Unexpected, undesired. Nobody wanted it. Sometimes he, you know, in the winter time, the, you know what the worst thing about a pothole in the winter time is? It'll give you a flat tire. Did you know that? There's just something about it. it hits so hard, it breaks the bead and lets the air out. There you sit with a perfectly good tire, but flat. In the winter time, your fingers get cold, your feet get cold, your ears get cold. Because you didn't dress to go outdoors and change a tire. You dress to get in that nice, comfortable car you got and drive down to the store and back. Unexpected problems. Glory. Problems that catch you off guard. Problems that send you into a tailspin. You say, boy, this sounds like I thought you were going to preach a positive message. I am. Because the good news is that even though at some point we'll encounter every one of these unexpected pleasures, attacks, problems, circumstances, but we have a promise. Do we know the promise? Are we expecting the promise? I remember one time at 30 below zero. I hit a pothole. 
of my little Pontiac and the tire went flat. I wasn't dressed to be outdoors walking around. But I got out my jack. I had never got out the jack in that car before. I got out the wrench. I got the hubcap off and I put the wrench onto one of the lug nuts and almost bent it into a U. <laughs> so then I decided to jack the car up. I mean, I might as well took the jack and threw it as far as I could out into any field because it wasn't going to work. Let's come with the car. And about then, some friends from Dairy Queen were going deer hunting. And they come down the road and they saw me and they stopped. And they said, Pastor, what's the problem? And here these big boys got out and I sat in the comfort of their car because it was running. They got out their jack. They got out their lug wrench. They fixed my tire that I was able to go to town and get it fixed and get a four-way lug wrench and get a good jack. <laughs> Glory. Everything worked out to the good. I could have sat there and had a tempter tantrum. I could have had a pouting party. And then it never drove by. Because I wouldn't have been believing God to move on my behalf. And I was believing God to move on my behalf. Father, somebody's got to come along. My heater worked great, so I'd be warm. But out of nowhere, this came. But out of nowhere, the help came. The help came. Glory. Second Corinthians 2.14 Now thanks be unto God who always, most Christians think that's only now and then, yeah, but they only think it's now and then. Just watch them. I mean, you don't really have to talk to them. You just watch them. They can tell you about all the problems, how hard it's going to be, what they're expecting. Why aren't they expecting God to move? Why aren't they expecting God to do exactly what He said He's going to do? You say you've never been through any struggles. <laughs> I don't want you to go through anything I've ever gone through. Glory. Hallelujah. Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ. we got to remember, it's not in us. It's in Christ. He's the one that will move through us. He's the one that will bring the victory. He's the one. Glory. But listen. And maketh manifest the Savior of His knowledge, not ours, by us in every place. In other words, He'll use it through us. Glory. I knew after they left me, there was two things that I needed. What was it? A jack and a wrench. Not one of those single little junk wrenches. And I don't keep them in any car I get now. I, I go buy myself a good four-way and I look it over careful because I put a four-way on one time and I twisted that. You've done that? Yeah. Revelation 12, 1. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. What is our word? Oh, no! Why me? Jesus. 
It's 30 below outdoors. I don't have my glove. I don't have my insulated boots. I don't have my good winter jacket. Is that your word of testimony? I bet you it is. Glory. I want to tell you. I want you to listen careful. The devil may knock you down today. He may throw all kind of unexpected curves, sin, divorce, sickness, financial disaster, your children on drugs, your company downsizes, and they're letting you go. Your church releases you. I know people that that's happened to. Your dreams and ministry have been crushed. That's time to praise God. That's time to start shouting. That's time to get excited. I mean, the devil's throwing everything he can at you. He ain't got nothing more. Glory. I did something the other day. I don't know what. But I've never had the... Even, even when my pancreas was acting up, and I thought that pain was bad. It always seems like I find out there's a, a different pain. I've had sciatic nerve pain twice. That's nothing. You know, that's nothing. You can't sleep, no, but it's, it's compared to the other pains, it's really nothing. I hope you don't ever get one that's worse than that. Glory. But this was, it was kind of a gas type pain. I was doubled over. And I'd have to get out of the toilet, you know. And every time I got weaker and weaker, and I called for prayer, hallelujah. My daughter loves me so much she gets nervous. And she's a typical nurse. She should have been a nurse. Serious. Every five minutes, door opens. Are you okay, Dad? I said, well, if I could get some sleep, I'd be okay. Isn't that what they do in the hospital? I mean, how are you doing? Never mind, just let me sleep. If I'm sleeping, apparently I must be doing good. You wake me up, and then I remember the pain is still there. Glory. Hallelujah. And then I finally told her, I said, if you got a couple of those plain pop pop fizz fizz I think they'd be just what I need at the moment not that I wasn't believing in God and prayer but I had a whole bunch of gas that was doubling me over I needed to get off and boy that helped so to sure helped Whew. glory the devil meant it for bad four hours I was out in my chair. Four hours. <laughs> I was telling some Christians, I go, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for this one, Lord. But somebody come to pray for me, and I was so glad they come to pray for me. That was nice, and I really appreciated it. And they did pray for me. And then they went out in the other room. Apparently, they watched TV. When I got on my chair and I went out in the other room to sit down, I saw they brought two other people along with them. And on the way out, the two people said, Oh, we love you. And I thought, No, you don't. Why do you stand there and lie like that? If you'd have loved me, if you'd been concerned, you would have been in that room. You would have come and prayed. Glory. Why is it so often Christians can be such phonies? And yet God wants these good Christians to pray for us. Glory. 
to hold us up, to lift us up, to encourage us. You see, when we need it, the Bible says, consider the other person. Because if you don't consider them, when you're down, who's going to come and help you? Glory. I would. I still would. This is positive, though. Watch. You know, a thousand things could happen. But the bottom line is this. You didn't expect it to hurt, and it does hurt. It threw you into a tailspin. It knocked the breath out of you. But, God was still there. He turned it around. He brought the victory. Glory. When I was a child, we lived with my grandmother and grandfather for a little while. But my mom and dad were in Syracuse working jobs for the war. And I was jumping on the bed. Man, was I having a great time. I was just a little fellow then, you know. Jumping on the bed. When all at once I heard, Donnie, is that you jumping on the bed? I realized that's grandma. Oh, no. So I went to jump off the bed. And I caught my heel on the bedspread. I landed right out of my stomach. It knocked the wind clean out of me. I laid there not knowing if I was going to be able to breathe or not. And nobody was howling. They heard a big thump. Nobody had come running yet. But you know, I didn't die. I thought I was going to. That's over 65 years ago. I said, over, over. So I just got to add a few more in there, but that's all right. Now since then, I've had all kind of unexpected things take place. When I was four years old, all the kids were slushing rides up over the hill that goes to Cortland from Homer. And who do you think was right there with him? (laughs) I could run fast, oh could I? And oh, the ride was so nice, and suddenly they hit Bear Road. No more snow. The big kids had all dropped off. I hit an unexpected expected obstacle. My mother took me to the German doctor that we had in Homer then. She, he said, don't let him sleep. Keep him awake all night. Regardless of what you do, don't let him sleep. I was four. I wanted to sleep. <laughs> the next day I was out doing everything that I normally did. I didn't expect that. I didn't even really know God then. I had a grandmother that knew God that always prayed for us. But that God knew me. Just like He knew you. He loved you. He took care of you through all those years. He brought you to where you are now. He's fulfilled His word and promise to you even when you didn't know Him. When we were His enemies. Unexpected curves. Now, Paul had a similar experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Acts 14, 19 through 20. And there came hither certain Jews from Antioch, and I, I call him, who pursued the people. And having stoned Paul, Did you get that? And having stoned Paul, 
drew him out of the city, supposing he had died. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around him, he rose up and came right back into the city. And the next day, yeah, him and Barnabas departed. All right. They thought Paul was dead. They thought Paul was dead, but he wasn't. Breath was just knocked out of him. Glory. He lost round one, but round two started. He lost maybe a chapter, but he didn't lose the book. You're still here, every one of you. There's been times in all of your lives when things like this have happened. It's knocked you off your feet. But you know, it was the biggest mistake that the devil ever made. Because when a Christian is knocked off his feet and they fall to their knees, did you get that? And when they fall to their knees, they touch heaven. And then when they touch heaven, hell trembles. And the power of God falls. It ain't over. It ain't over. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll tell you. Uh, Before you ever step into the ring, it was already determined. Now get this. It was already determined. You're going to win. It's a fixed fight. You don't realize it. This is a fixed fight. The devil's been defeated. God's declared us the winner. And the devil's so dumb he don't know it. And he still wants to fight us. It's a fixed fight. We win. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When I was coming back from overseas, there was three of us and they were doing some boxing on the ship for entertainment. And uh, the one guy said, I like to box. I've never done it. I said, well, you want to box? Well, go box. Oh, no. I said, no, look, I'll fake it all. I'll pull all my punches. I won't hit you hard. I'll just make it look good. All right. So we got into the ring, and I was just clowning around, you know, and I threw a right like that, and next thing I know, he cracked me. And I've been hit before. But my knees buckled, because I wasn't expecting it. I mean, he wasn't pulling any punches. So we did... Round number one in the peekaboo, and he never touched me again, except my arms. My friend said, Man, I thought he was only going to play because he was my corner man. He said, Every one of us could hear that crack. And I said, Yeah. <laughs> Round two, I played peekaboo. I thought after round two, I've lived up to my part of the bargain. So round three started, and I threw this hand up like that, and he tried to come over and crack me again because he definitely knew how to fight, and I threw this hand up like that, and I let him have it. (laughs) After the ref counted ten... (laughs) I thought, well... I told you I wouldn't hit you no higher than you hit me. I mean, (laughs) glory. The devil likes to play games with us, but we're the winners. 
We're the victors. We win. We win. Yeah. I can't say that you'll never be knocked down. I can't say that you'll never be caught off guard. I can't say you'll never be troubled or preplexed or forsaken. But I can say and be 100% right if you believe it. Glory. You're going to win. The Bible says nothing. What is nothing? How about six foot nine, three hundred and fifty pounds, thirty inch biceps? Is that nothing? That's nothing. Still nothing. To separate us from the love of God. God saw him when he came in there. God saw that. He says, "That's my child." When I was younger, I might do it now, I don't know. You hit one of my kids, and you were big. Look out. One time we had my oldest, who was probably seven then, and the assistant pastor's son went over in the park to play, and we could hear some screaming and hollering. So I told him, maybe we better go check it out. And so we got over there, and there's these two boys over there, one 14 and the other about 15. They just, man, they were having a ball. I stepped right in and I said, hey, what do you think you're doing? And they had some choice words. And they said, you can't touch me because I am 14 I cracked and there he went sprawling across the ground I cracked the other one I said I didn't touch you remember I said you said I can't touch you I'm going home and get my father I said you want us to wait till he comes back or what do you think God feels how do you think God acts we're his children. Amen. We're precious. Some of you I don't know. Others I really know. But Dan I haven't known as long as a lot of people. But I would say don't walk up and hit Paula if Dan is standing there. <laughs> You would turn a tiger loose. <laughs> and before you could get your hands up to protect yourself, did you see on, oh, it was, it was a riot. On Fox News, they showed this guy 145 pounds. He walked up to this car. He stuck his pistol right in the car, right in the guy's face. Said, I want all your money. I want your billfold. And I want your car keys. The guy said, Oh, yeah? He said, You being smart with me? Get out of that car. The guy said, Are you sure about this? <laughs> this is on Fox News. <laughs> and the guy waved his pistol like this, you know. That's how they told him Fox News. They said, Get out. He said, Rather, 145 pounds. The guy opened the door, stepped out. He was an ultimate boxer. <laughs> Took that gun away from him. He, the guy they showed him, he had two big swelled up black eyes. I mean, his whole face was a mess. He probably wished he'd never, never. I believe that's us. I believe God will take care of us. I believe, well, I believe God will protect us. Second Timothy one two, or one twelve. I know whom I believe. Do you believe it? Amen. And I'm persuaded. 
Are you persuaded? That he is able to keep that which I commit unto him against that day. I mean, this person to come to pray for me said, What are you doing in bed? You said you're not going till the rapture. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, I'm not. What makes you think I'm going any place? I'm not going till the rapture. I guess we can't lay down once in a while. <laughs> Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Do you love God? Amen. Then it's going to work together. That means the bad. The bad is going to be overdone because they're working together and the good is going to outdo it. And it's all coming out good. Amen. Romans 8, 37 and 38 now. Nay. What's that word nay mean? Doesn't mean no. <laughs> it's a stronger way of saying yes. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loves us. I mean, this is the strongest way you can say yes. Yes! Yeah. You may lose a round, like I said. You know, you may get your breath knocked out of you. You may get a black eye and a busted lip and a bloody nose or a broken nose. But the best is to come. Amen. You say, that that's good? Yeah. Because you win. Amen. I mean, it's your turn. Amen. Glory. You just set back. And remember, it's a setup. It's a setup for a comeback. It's a setup for a win. It's a setup for a victory. Because greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. Glory. First John four four. Somebody needs this message. The devil's been having a victory. But remember, that's only round one. When are you going to get mad? When are you going to step up? Yeah. That's not the whole chapter. That's just one book. One verse. <laughs> one verse, you're right. It's not the book. You're getting ready to start round two. Glory. And a new chapter. New strength. New anointing. New faith. New power, new victory. Glory. A whole new chapter in your life. It ain't over. Amen. Glory. In fact, it's just getting started. Glory. Now, if I had more time, I'd talk to you a little bit about the three Hebrew children. You remember them? And how they heated up the furnace seven times hotter than ever. And they bound them up and threw them into the fire. The end, right? No. No. Not quite. It wasn't the end. You know, when the king looked in there again, he didn't see three men. He saw four men. Loose and walking around, and there was no smoke on them. Amen. And what happened when round two started? They were appointed over all the others in the kingdom. Wow. The king promoted them. Or how about Daniel? I mean, those lions were hungry. They were hungry. Huh? 
Daniel 6, 17. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own ring and with a, the signet of his lords. They all signed it. The purpose might be according. No? According to what the king had said. Daniel will die by the lions. The end, right? No. Not quite. That's just chapter 1. Daniel 6, 19 and 20. Then the king rose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of the, of the lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a, a, a loud crying voice unto Daniel. And the king spoke and said, Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou continually... Get that word. Continually... Not part time. Able to deliver thee. Verse 21. Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. I mean, the king just tried to kill him. He says, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel. Angel, one single angel, no S on it, glory, and has shut the mouths of the lions, and they have not hurt me, for as much before his innocency was found in me, and also before the old king, I've done no harm, hurt. He become second in command over the whole nation. With more power, in a sense, than Daniel, or than the king had. Hallelujah. I mean, the devil's going to try circumstances. He's going to try to send things. He may throw the fiery furnace at you. He might close the door behind you. Or, he might throw you into the lion's den. And roll the stone over. But the same God that delivered the three Hebrew children and delivered Daniel will deliver you. Amen. The same God. Amen. The devil sent it to take them out. But God is going to use it to lift them up. They win. It ain't over yet. Amen. It ain't over yet. Remember? It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Sorry. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for your miracles. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your signs and wonders. We thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing. And Father, we ask you to meet every need, not only here in this building, but throughout the whole world. We ask you to heal perform miracles, to deliver, to set free. And Father, most of all, place within the heart of your children. It ain't over! Amen. It ain't over! Start a new chapter. Read the book. We win. Amen.